The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Thursday, June 30, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 360 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Toronto Blue Jays vs Tampa Bay Rays. Our team pick is. Toronto Blue Jays, plus 1.5, runs. And here is why. Bad things tend to happen when the Rays are playing on the road. So they're already at a serious disadvantage when traveling across the northern border for Thursday's matchup. Things have been so bad that even the Baltimore Orioles have a better road record than the 15-17 Rays. The offense continues to sputter at every turn, and even the defense got a bit tripped up in their previous series loss to the Milwaukee Brewers. Despite allowing the fourth least runs per game, the Rays allowed the Brewers to waltz right onto Tropicana Field, hang five runs on the scoreboard in back-to-back -back games, and leave with a clean sweep. The Blue Jays are currently sitting in second in the AL East division behind the New York Yankees, as of Wednesday evening. They're neck and neck with the Boston Red Sox and only two wins ahead of the Rays in the standings. So this will be another opportunity for them to establish a little breathing room if they can knock off another division rival. That's obviously a big if considering how dominant the Rays have typically been defensively. They're holding opponents to an average of only 7.40 hits per game. But don't expect that to quell the confidence of a power-hitting Blue Jays offensive lineup coming into this game with the fifth most home runs on average this season. That element of the game was missing when these two teams last played in May. They couldn't get anything going consistently enough at the plate to overcome a suffocating defensive effort from the Rays. The Rays aren't scaring anyone at the plate, even with Yusei Kikuchi's up and down pitching leading the Blue Jays into battle. They aren't packing enough power to take advantage of this matchup, and even if they do find an offensive spark, the Blue Jays will keep it close enough to overtake them in the later innings. That's the scary part about facing Toronto at the Rogers Center. All it takes is one homer before everyone is suddenly carrying a home run stick in the offensive lineup. That's when the floodgates can open on opposing teams. Speaking of floodgates, the Rays haven't stopped much of anything from opening on them when playing away from their home field this season. They've clearly been a more vulnerable team on the road, where they're allowing the seventh most home runs per game on average. Opportunity will come calling for the hard-hitting Blue Jays in a tough matchup against Jeffrey Springs, and they'll answer the call with a swing of the bat. Crack. Our total pick is. Over and here is why. Neither pitching staff as a whole has been doing entirely well in the last seven days, as the Rays are 13th in the sport in that span, with a 3.91 team ERA, while the Blue Jays are 25th with a 4.70 staff ERA. Corey Kluber and Yusei Kikuchi are not likely to overwhelm these lineups, and the Rays are without Brooks Raleigh and Ryan Thompson in the bullpen. Neither team has rally killing double plays offensively this season, as Tampa is 29th, with 38 double plays hit into, while Toronto is tied for 12th in MLB, with 54 double plays hit into. Go with the over to hit as it seems to be the more likely situation here. Chicago Cubs vs Cincinnati Reds. Our team pick is. Cincinnati Reds and here is why. The Reds will have Graham Ashcraft make his 8th start of the season. Ashcraft posted his best start of the season last weekend, limiting the Giants to only two runs on six hits in eight innings, propelling his team to a 4-2 win. The talented rookie right-hander has been effective in five of his seven performances and features a solid 3.27 ERA and a 1.09 whip, complemented by a 4-1 record in 41.1 innings pitched. This marks his first career meeting against the Cubs. Cincinnati is concluding a six-game road trip in this one. They registered a surprising two wins in three games in San Francisco last weekend, propelled by a barrage of runs. Overall they have not been playing well, going 3-7 in their last 10 games. The Reds continue to play without Tyler Naquin. The Cubs will have Kyle Hendricks take the mound for the 15th time of the season. Hendricks was brilliant in his previous start, recording 7.1 shutout innings against the rival Cardinals, and was awarded the win to improve his season record to 3-6. The veteran right-hander is having an inconsistent season and has amassed a 4.15 ERA this month. His season ERA has dipped to 4.90, along with a 1.30 whip in 75.1 innings pitched. 
Hendricks squandered four runs in four innings against the Reds last month and is 7-6 with a 4.47 ERA in 23 career meetings. Chicago is having a rough month of June due to the pitching issues. They are starting to play better recently, posting a needed road series win against the Cardinals this past weekend. The Cubs should have a few pitchers return from injuries soon which will be a welcome sight. The Reds have been dangerous at the plate. They registered a series win against the Giants prior to this series, collecting 16 runs in the three bouts. Red starter Graham Ashcraft just tossed an eight-innings gem against the Giants last time out, and the Reds are winning games with him on the hill, recording a 6-1 record in the rookie's seven starts. Furthermore, Cubs starter Kyle Hendricks is having an inconsistent season. He squandered four runs in the lone meeting against the Reds this season and has not been reliable at Wrigley Field, where he has recorded a poor 5.180 RA in eight starts. Our total pick is over 9.5 runs. And here is why. To be frank, both of these pitching staffs are bad. They each rank inside the bottom five in the league in team ERA, with Cincy ranked last and Chicago spiraling in the wrong direction. Hendricks has yet to find his groove all season. Look for the Reds to jump on him early. Ashcroft has looked sharp but at just 24 years of age remains vulnerable to a Cubs offense that ranks 11th in OBP and 12th in BA. The over is 6-2 in the Reds' last eight games. Given the bad pitching on both sides and palatable offenses, we can expect to see plenty of runs come across on Thursday night. Los Angeles Dodgers vs San Diego Padres. Our team pick is Dodgers to win, and here is why. The San Diego Padres snapped a three-game losing skid with a 4-0 victory over the Arizona Diamondbacks. They fell short 7-6 to the backs in the opening game of the series, but responded with a 4-0 win to improve to a 46-31 record. Mike Clevenger improved to a 2-0 record after pitching for 6.0 innings, allowing no runs on one hit with six strikeouts and one walk. Nick Martinez worked for 3.0 innings and did a decent job with no runs allowed on two hits. Jay Cronenworth impressed offensively with three hits, two RBIs, and one run, while C.J. Abrams had a multi-hit game in this win. The Los Angeles Dodgers lost three of the last four games, two of which were against the Colorado Rockies at Coors Field. Not only did the Dodgers lose the opening two games of the series to the Rockies, but they failed to score a single run in the first duel, allowing four in return. After these two losses to Colorado, the Dodgers dropped to a 45-28 record, and they didn't exploit the fact the Mets lost three in a row to climb back to the top of the National League. Clayton Kershaw didn't experience the best of starts as he lasted for just 4.0 innings in a 7-4 loss to the Rockies. He allowed six runs on nine hits with four strikeouts and four walks, and although the relievers played well and led only a run for the remainder of the game, the Dodgers couldn't avoid a loss. On offense, Freddie Freeman and Max Muncy had a multi-hit game, while Tree Turner hit a solo homer, all of which proved to be insufficient for the Dodgers in this one. Musgrove has been dominant this season, apart from his most recent start and the first loss of the campaign. Still, it's going to be hard to keep the Dodgers' batters in check, especially following their pale display in the series against the Colorado Rockies. I am sure the Dodgers will respond offensively, and even though Musgrove has the ability to keep any offense at bay, I don't think he will have success against Los Angeles on Thursday. Right now, I like the Dodgers' batters more, and that's why I am backing them to get a win in this one. Our total pick is under 8 runs. And here is why. While the total has gone over in 4 of the last 5 games between these teams, I am leaning towards the under in this season opener. Musgrove has been solid all season ranking tied for second in the majors in wins and fifth in team ERA. His last outing was, by far, his worst of the season giving up six runs, but even facing a solid LA lineup he will have a good outing. I look for the same from White, who has been decent in his last three starts but has gotten little run support. This game one will be a low scoring affair, so the under is the pick. Seattle Mariners vs Oakland Athletics. Our team pick is. Seattle minus 1.5 runs. And here is why. Oakland was sitting at a respectable 15 to 20 mark midway through May, but the Athletics have been on a major downward spiral since then. They have only won consecutive games twice over the past 1.5 months, with one of those occurrences coming last weekend when they beat Kansas City on Saturday and Sunday. The Athletics proceeded to lose three straight games against the Yankees earlier this week, wrapping up the series with a 5-3 loss on Wednesday. They are amid a 10-game road trip that will conclude with Sunday's series finale. Oakland is essentially out of the playoff race already, trailing Tampa Bay by 16.5 games for the final Al Wild Card spot. Seattle got off to an 11-6 start this season before eventually falling 10 games under the .500 mark 10 days ago. The Mariners have responded with a strong stretch of baseball, winning seven of their last nine games. They are coming off a pair of wins over Baltimore, including a 9-3 victory on Wednesday. 
Seattle is trying to battle its way back into playoff contention, sitting 5.5 games back of Tampa Bay in the Al Wild Card race. The Mariners have been a poor offensive team, ranked number 18 and team batting average .234. They will be facing an Oakland pitching staff that is number 24 with an ERA of 4.44. Seattle is rarely this large of a favorite, but I think this spot certainly warrants the hefty price. The Mariners are not only the better team, but they are also in better form and have the better pitcher on the mound. They are coming off a pair of wins, while Oakland was swept by New York earlier this week. Gilbert has been one of the most underrated starting pitchers in baseball, posting a 2.44 ERA so far this season. He has four wins in last six outings and is poised to add a fifth win in seven tries on Thursday. Meanwhile, the Athletics are having to send a replacement arm to the mound for this game. Our total pick is, over the total, the Athletics are averaging 3.20 runs per game and 3.95 runs per game on the road. They averaged one run per game in their last three games against the Mariners. With Seattle giving up 3.94 runs per game at home, the Athletics will hit their average in this game. The Mariners are averaging 3.93 runs per game and 3.94 runs per game at home. They averaged 6.33 runs per game in their last three games against the Athletics. With Oakland giving up 4.41 runs per game on the road, the Mariners will score enough runs to push the score over the total. The Athletics and Mariners played over the total in four of their last six meetings.